Hi, this is Kingsley. Today we'll take a look at the Redmi 10. Now this is one of those devices that I was excited about when it was announced. After laying my hands on the phone, um, I think it's a great device but there are certain aspects or there are certain things that I wished were done better and we're going to look at them. First off, we start here with the display. On paper, this is a 1080p display, it's 6.5 inches in size, it has a 90Hz refresh rate which means the display is supposed to be smooth when you're scrolling it or when you're using it. The first time I turned on this phone after I unboxed it from the pack, I noticed that the display was not as vibrant as other um, devices in this price category or in this caliber. The display is a bit dull, the colors are not there, and around that whole punch cut out on the screen, there is an LCD bleed, which you find on most devices in this category, but the Redmi 10 takes it a step further. Even at the sides of the phone, if you turn the display to a particular angle, you're still going to see some like blue colors popping out at the side of the phone, which is really, really not pleasing to look at. The display is supposed to have a 90 hertz refresh rate, but I think this is my least favorite implementation of a high refresh rate on a device of this caliber. Scrolling through pages and playing games just feels like the device has something less than a 60 hertz refresh rate which um, I guess is because I have used a lot of other devices that have performed better in terms of higher refresh rates. But outside of that, the display is still okay, you can still do your thing, you can still browse the web, you can still watch videos, but I just can't help noticing all the um, LCD bleeds by the sides and also how unvibrant or how um, not punchy and dull the colors are on this phone. In the last five years, I have covered a lot of Redmi phones, I think since like 2015. But um, this might just be my least favorite Redmi phone in terms of display in the last five years. Since the price of the Redmi Note 10 is just about 10 to $25 different from the Redmi 10, or I think about 10,000 to 15,000 Naira different from the Redmi 10, I'd rather buy the Redmi Note 10. It's a great phone, it has an AMOLED display, I have used it and I have recommended it for a lot of my, um, my clients and they are very happy with it, no complaints so far. Like other Redmi phones, the Redmi 10 comes in a white box with some basic specs written on it and then you see the picture of the phone in front. Inside the box you get a TPU case, some paperwork, a SIM ejector tool, you find the phone itself, which we're going to place aside for now you find an 18 watts fast charging brick and then you also get the USB-C cable. The Redmi 10 has a very glossy design. The color I have here is the sea blue color and it has a gradient vibe going on so depending on the angle that you're holding the device that will determine the kinds of colors you will see and how reflective um, the body is. And the body is plastic also. The frame is plastic, it's only the display that is coated with coloring Gorilla Glass 3. And in a typical Redmi fashion, the build quality feels really solid and the phone is quite handy and it's a little bit heavy and that is due to that 5000 milliamps battery that is inside which we're going to talk about shortly. And just for the record, try not to commit any crime close to this phone because this phone will keep records of your fingerprints and give them to the police. At the bottom of the Redmi 10, you get a USB Type-C port. Now, instead of putting the headphone jack at the bottom of the device, they rather put it on top of the device and then you also find the IR blaster there, which is a constant in all Redmi phones. And you find the second stereo speaker here, which is something that I greatly commend them for. I mean, you can hardly find devices in this caliber these days that um, have stereo speakers. So, well done Redmi. At the right side of the Redmi 10, you get a side-mounted fingerprint reader that doubles as the power button. You will also find the volume up and down keys. On the left side, you get a SIM tray, dual SIM tray that can carry two SIM cards and an SD card. The Redmi 10 is powered by the MediaTek Helio G88. And for some reason, I am not feeling the performance of this chipset on this phone. Playing games on this device is not smooth. Playing games on this device is not fun at all and coupled with the fact that the display of the device is not so great so it makes the experience even <laughs> not so pleasing. 
But outside that, for light day-to-day activities like um, scrolling through social media, replying emails, and doing basic tasks, the chipset actually performs well on this phone. The Redmi 10 comes in two variants. There's a variant that has 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigabytes internal storage. And there's another variant that has um, 6 gigs of RAM and 128 gigabytes internal storage. The 5000 milliamps battery that powers this phone can take you through all day without needing to charge. But for power users, you can be killing this battery around 3 p.m. or 2 p.m. in the afternoon or maybe around 4 p.m. depends on what you do with your device. Screen on time is around 7 to 8 hours, so that is more than good if you ask me. And it will also take you around 2 hours to charge this device from 0 to 100. From the box, this device comes with Android 11 and MIUI 12.5. For some reason, some of the very very important features that I use on MIUI are no longer available on the Redmi 10. For instance, a feature like Second Space is gone. And for those of you who don't know, Second Space is like um, creating your private bedroom or creating your private hideout in your phone. You can store personal things there and nobody can access them even if they get access to your phone without your password or without your fingerprint. But this feature is not available on the Redmi 10 anymore and that is really annoying. The main lens on the Redmi 10 is a 50 megapixel f1.8 wide angle lens. You get an 8 megapixel ultra wide, you get a 2 megapixel depth sensor, and then you get a 2 megapixel macro lens. In front of the device, you get a single 8 megapixel hole punch selfie camera. Both front and back cameras can shoot 1080p videos at 30 frames per second. While these specs are so great on paper, the um, reality is not so good, or the implementation in real life is not so great. The pictures are not so sharp, the dynamic range is um, a bit off, and the selfie images are just okay. As of the time of this recording, the Redmi 10 is selling for 89,000 Naira for a version that has 4 gigs of RAM and 64 gigabytes internal storage. After watching this video and knowing what you now know about the Redmi 10, my question to you is, will you buy this phone or will you consider buying it for yourself or for somebody for Christmas?